Right, so Aisha Ibrahim has joined me and she has uh, all the uh, filler on Journeys Interactive. Welcome. Israel, thank you. But I'm just guessing how you will behave if your, your wife, for instance, um, a raises guy, her foot. Not, or not, not raising her foot, but if you put yourself in the lady's shoe, if it was you, uh, a certain I've told guy Asher, I've, coming I've, to. I've told Miss G already that I'll raise my foot. <laughs> Just like just the lady, that. just like the re lady raised her I foot. I can see you can you do more. You do more than raising your foot. Just that. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the girl was right. I mean, I mean, it was good defense. You need to defend, though. It's yeah, very right. important. You know how to join this conversation is on Facebook.com/slash Join News on TV, and on Twitter is on Joy News. Now, let's have a beautiful conversation. You know, no harsh words no qualms with anybody there's a sad revelation about the increasing number of teenage girls who are being impregnated in the central region now 301 of the over 13,000 girls in this situation are reported to have been impregnated by their teachers most of whom are primary and secondary school teachers question i ask what do you think is accounting for this and what do you recommend to resolve this I think it's individual attitude, people's individual attitude, because, um, you know, some people, well, we may say that those who are not married, the young teachers, they normally do that, but well, it cuts across, because there are some people who are married, but it's part, it's their behavior, you know, um, uh, let's say they like anything in skirts <laughs> goes for them. So uh, basically, it's, it's attitude. If you have, if you are brought up well, you're you are morally upright. I don't think you go for. I mean, even not even adults. Fine, there are adults there you can go for. Why children? So. I think it has to do with. I mean, the attitude of maybe the teacher and sometimes some of the students. You understand. Um, one reason why I'm saying is the attitude, um, is attitude and also something, the kind of cultural background a person is what coming from. You get it. Um, just like me, for instance, um, though some of the students may be very, maybe, good, looking good or attractive, but then you are their teacher. As a teacher, that you respect yourself, you won't even expect to lower your respect so you can't sleep with your student if you sleep with a student that means you are not a right person to teach these people because you came in as a womanizer yeah so as a such person is supposed to be sucked out of front uh, out of the system some of the students uh, they they make themselves very bad and they look so sexy so that it attracts the teachers to do so many things so the parents supposed to teach them how to dress and how to talk how to humble themselves that's the only thing is that's the only thing important in this world <laughs> interesting comments uh some teachers really make themselves sexy? Yes. They do? Well, yeah, I've seen photos uh, where the sexy female teachers. But this, we're talking about male teachers. I haven't seen any sexy male teachers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's check what you've been posting I'm sure, I'm sure the Facebook. viewers will also have their own thing to say about me. Right. So it will help us read the messages on Facebook. says, I'm not a teacher, but I believe teachers going after students is a personal character embedded in that particular person. It's not only teachers, but cuts across the entire society. Most men go after underage girls, but society is mute about it and only talk about it when it involves a teacher. <coughs> and, uh, well, points of correction. In this particular survey that was done, uh, it looked at lots of people. Apparently, they are drivers, they are farmers, and several other people who impregnated the girls too. Judicious with Drew says, I'm not a teacher, but every teacher will tell you that no one prepares a good soup without tasting it. <laughs> hey! <laughs> so this might be an additional payment for them since their salaries are not enough. Oh, wow. <laughs> Compared to doctors really? and other organizational heads. 
And also, some of the students get close to some teachers by taking advantage of the academic performance. So this is normal. There are three replies. I want to see the replies <laughs> that are there because uh, this is bound to generate replies. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's let's move on. Let's move on. Let's go Good to Bambakia. Bambakia's uh, comments. I think we should mind the way we treat teachers in this country. This is the avoidal and attitude problem, which cuts across all walks of life. Are you guys saying that all the defilement cases we have been hearing in this country are committed by teachers? That's Ghanians not what we said. Are where they are because they have misplaced priorities. Far bend them or <laughs> bam yada. What does bam yada mean? I won't agree. Okay. <laughs> Prince Kwame says from okay from Golu Hospital. What I did was to be friends with those who can't do anything with. And he helped me, pa. Okay. Who I can't, those sure. you can't do anything with. And he helped me, pa. And after they completed school for some years to pass, they are edible. Oh. <laughs> hey, friends, so you were eyeing them, even though you couldn't do anything at that time. <laughs> As the Costa says, which category of teachers? Are they trained? National service people, teachers, community teachers, youth or employment? They should come again. Since this research, uh, they should state the category. They said primary and secondary school teachers. What in Canada was said, some teachers will do that to the students because they can't provide for their age group ladies, so they take advantage of school girls who are cheap and easy, uh, easy to be convinced. Kasim, especially unique, Abubakar says, I can't think far. Maybe after teaching adolescent reproductive health in the classroom, they invited the pupils to their bedrooms for practicals. Hmm, it's interesting. Also, renting an apartment in Ghana can be very stressful with a huge housing deficit in the country. Of course, we've heard stories of landlords going as far as converting kitchens and storerooms to bedrooms just to make more money. You agree with me? Now, if you're lucky enough, you're likely to get an apartment or house of your choice, but most property seekers seldom do, resulting in most people having to compromise with annoying landlords and poor conditions. So share with me the difficult or the compromises you've ever had to make in securing an apartment. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes it's about the money that you have. So the apartment become expensive in Ghana. Each six month or one year, you should they will increase the price about the apartment. So this is sometimes it's hard. So when they increase like this, and for those who are working, the uh, the salary is not that too much. So this is something. And also we have to go through uh, some agent too. Agent fees are there, so you have to pay them. So this is most, most of the time, this is the problem. Location where the apartment is, at times you have to fall on these agents. And some of them, they have to, they, they will deceive you in several ways before even getting the accommodation. And the facilities, the, maybe where the bathroom is, you have to share with somebody. The toilet facilities, to, you have to share with somebody. Well, initially when you get to see the room that you want to rent sometimes the finishing is not to your taste so eventually you have to take the costs that you have to um, fix the windows the painting the doors whatever has to be done in the room sometimes even the electric house and it's it's a very big problem that most of the you know the landlords and the landladies are creating for tenants who come. Our own experience has said that when we are going to a rented a place, you have to make an inquiry. So a lot of people that are around, they told me the man is not having a good character because it's due to other people also, lack of to what he did to me. So anytime I want to rent a place, I have to make an inquiry, find out the man, his behavior, what is in the facility that he's having before I will pay my money to the landlord. So that's what some of the things I go through. All right. 
so a lot of experiences people are sharing. Let's check what experience you have on Facebook. I doubt, Aisha, you've ever had an experience like that. I haven't had any okay. experience you're, like you're, that. You're very you're lucky. <laughs> Judicious, okay. I think I'll check the environment, which includes security, because some areas are for thieves and troublemakers. I'll also check their utility bills, toilets and baths, accessibility of water and transport. Kuti Boateng says, in my area, we rent a room, but not property. When you have water and decent washroom in the house, then why not? But in the absence, if these, not, not, not. But Boateng Kenneth says, I'll check the environment, the security of the area, availability of water, light, decent washroom. In the absence of these, I won't rent that apartment. Papa, I can say, source of water, light, and the environment, that's how the place looks like when it rains and crime rates. And Papa Bekan Wunchi says, source of water, light, and the environment. That's how the place look like when it rains and crime rates. Okay, Chief Manose says, uh, when, at all, uh, when at all will the government complete the affordable house? And yet is a cry. And T.A. Men says, none yet, but I know of friends who had to be giving food to the landlords <laughs> <laughs> just to continue staying. Of course, there are interesting stories you hear from you know, people renting and their landlords and landladies. Now, finally, fufu is a delicacy most Ghanaians enjoy. No two ways about that. Of course, you cannot think about Ghanaian cuisine without fufu coming first on the list. Now, depending on which part of the country you are from, you may be used to eating pounded cassava or cocoa yam with plantain or just pounded yam fufu. Interestingly, Dr. Mensa Otabel, founder of the International Central Gospel Church, says fufu is killing Africans. He explains the process in preparing the food itself is both stressful and unhygienic, adding the matter can harbor bacteria. So for you, the fufu lovers, I'm sure this will be bad news for you. But I need you to tell me what will become of you if you stop eating fufu. <laughs> I eat fufu, I do eat fufu. Once in a while, you know, it's good to take in fufu. Or have you ever thought that sometimes the bacteria in the mortar and the pestle over time, they just grow in and may be in your fufu? No, I, I don't think so because when the fufu is about to be pounded, the water dies on, before boiling the cassava, you see the hot water, the left hot water. They pour it on the mortar and everything. So I think the hot water kills the bacteria and everything. That's what I think. What would it take for you to stop eating fufu? What would it take for me to stop eating fufu? Maybe when I'm sick and doctor tells me stop eating fufu. <laughs> I eat fufu. How much do you like fufu? Oh, I like it on in the afternoons. Let's say if every day, every day in the afternoon I like fufu. Yeah. Aren't you concerned that even that sometimes there can be bacteria hidden in the in the pistol or the mortar? Mm, something being preparing in the house, I will even consider it more than the outside ones. Okay. So, so even with the bacteria that you probably are not seeing that is in the food, would, you, would that stop you from eating food? It won't stop me. So what would The people who don't mind the bacteria, they can't be bothered. <laughs> don't mind the bacteria, mind the... <laughs> mind the fufu. Chris Boateng says the bacteria found in the, in the mortar is capable of preventing six killer disease. <laughs> and that is what has protected us till now. Was he killed when he ate fufu at a tender age? Ghanaian bacteria are friendly <laughs> and they give us retentive memory. <laughs> And now Kwame says, well, the software, I disagree with you. My grandma ate fufu for 110 years before she died. In fact, she ate it twice every day. What about that? Fufu is manna. How can we stop? Fufu, fufu, oh, Interesting. And Sandra, you draw from, says, bacteria is everywhere in the air we breathe on our skin, bed, water. Just name it. So, yes, on the mortar and pistle, too. It could be pathogenic or not. Whichever the case is, you can't avoid it. Please enjoy your fufu. And on that enjoyment, <laughs> you know who's, who I'm thinking about? Who? Rafiq Salam. How would he say enjoy? <laughs> enjoy. <laughs> All right. So that's how we end the interactive segment. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. 
Enjoy the rest of our food.